What's up guys, we are back with another Mythic Legions review, and my pre-orders for Elithia, my pre-orders for the Deluxe Legion Builders, they have not shipped yet. I have all-ins coming, and those, this time around, that's all shipping towards the end, or the very end, so I might be one of the unlucky few that has to wait a little while longer still for my actual orders uh, to get here, but my impatience and my jealousy, envy, whatever you want to call it, has gotten the better of me, so I have gone to the secondary market and gotten a couple figures. The first one that's arrived is the Deluxe Skeleton Legion Builder. I'm not going to go crazy on getting extras just to, you know, calm myself down, but I had to get one, two. So we're going to take a look at this guy today. So he is one of the handful of Deluxe Legion Builders uh, that are supposed to just be our way to army build in new ways. So this is not the standard Legion Builder that we've gotten previously. This is a new configuration of parts with some new stuff to make a different kind of skeleton. So right there, right off the bat, I'm excited, new skeleton. So we've got him here, of course, in our standard Legion style packaging. So figure there in the window, in the tray, uh, you've got the Necronominus uh, emblem on the side. You just got a product shot on the other side because this is a Legion Builder, so no bio. And then the back of the box does give us that write-up of Mythos as well as the new Legion Builder uh, cross-sell and that newer Legion Builder artwork. So let's do it. Let's pull them out and take a look. And here we go, out of the package, our Deluxe Skeleton Legion Builder from our Legion Builder Wave, another entry in the Mythic Legion's Bone Boys, my favorite type of Mythic Legion's figure, a skeleton. And for the uninitiated, you know, a Legion Builder is very much its own thing within Mythic Legions. They are kind of like a subset of the overall line. So these guys are they're using the same parts that we see across the line. That's that's a big thing with Legions is, you know, mixing and matching parts to make new and exciting combinations. But these guys don't have the same level of paint detail as your, your normal named characters. They also have a smaller price point to account for that too. So these are the guys that are like your, your, your boots on the ground, your grunts, uh, your actual legion. You know, if you wanted to build out a real legion, this is a way to go about doing that. Uh, and I've always been a fan of the idea of this, and it works really well. And this guy is different enough from the other skeleton legion builders we already have that he's very much his own thing. There is a lot of familiar parts here. New and old, new or an old, I, I suppose. Uh, not brand, brand new, but some stuff from recent waves and stuff from, you know, way back when. So we are going to do some comparisons to the other Skeleton Legion builders just so you can get an idea of exactly how different they are. But this guy is still very much familiar territory. If you've messed with a, a skeleton, you've kind of messed with them all. This guy is a 1.0 style figure as well. So if you've messed with a 1.0, you know what's going on here too. So as far as your head goes, he can look up a little bit. The, he's got this monster helmet on him, and it does hit the back of the collar right away. He can look down pretty decently, though. Tilt on this thing, though, is absolutely ridiculous, which works really well for a skeleton. And then you've, of course, got full rotation. The neck is also articulated. It doesn't exactly help him, but it, it does swivel. Arms will go out at the shoulder. You can get that uh, armor piece up and out of the way. Full rotation, of course. You've got your single-jointed rotating elbow basically 90 degrees you've got rotating forearms here as well because uh because of the separate pieces and then we've got rotation and hinge at the wrist as usual again 1.0 figure so he's got that single buck torso it's connected with a ball joint to the to the waist so he goes backwards he goes forward tilt side to side and rotation so it gives you a good bobble i'm still a big fan of this like i think it i think it works well enough uh, i per, i still prefer 1.0 to 2.0 really You've got legs that go out pretty much all the way. Nothing really gets in the way when it comes to skeleton legs, as you can imagine. Kick forward, kick backward. The one thing they don't have, though, skeletons with exposed bone thighs do not have thigh cuts because, well, there's no cut. There's no thigh, really, so you don't have anything to move. You've got your single-jointed rotating knee. And then down at the ankles, you've got rotation at that top of the actual uh, ankle itself where it connects to the shin. And then you've got a little rocker and we've got hinges down there as well. So again, if you've messed with a skeleton, you messed with them all really. If you've messed with a 1.0 figure, you've kind of messed with them all. But for the uninitiated, there is a bit of a run through on what our skeleton can do. Now, as far as the, the look, the feel of this figure, this is where this particular skeleton diverges from the line in general and also from the other skeletons. So, being a Legion Builder, 
it's just a base, base figure. So you don't get the gaudy, accentuated, you know, over the top paint schemes that we see on the name characters. You get your run of the mill armor for your run of the mill character, for your run of the mill, just grunt army legion builder, you know, somebody who would be in the front line. So the, the way they, they sort of, you know, sell these is that these are just your your nameless grunts. So they don't get the crazy armor. And it, and it works well, especially when you take into consideration the fact that they're cheaper. There is a lot of familiarity here, though. It's, it's mostly reused parts. And I, I'm not saying that in a negative way. It's just the way it goes. So you've got, you know, in comparison to, say, the 1.0 Legion Builder, which we'll, we'll do a comparison to here in a bit, you know, you've got the same arms, you've got the same legs, but the torso is the Red Shield Soldier torso from the Aerithere wave. So is the little gorget piece that he's got up there. And then when we get to pauldrons, you know, they're from another Aerithere wave figure. So uh, there is a lot of familiarity here, but he is close enough to that regular skeleton that until you get them next to each other, you realize ex you don't really maybe realize exactly how different they are. And in some ways, this figure feels even more grunty to me than the original Skeleton Legion Builder. That one feels more like a commander now in comparison because it seems to have a little bit more accentuated armor for me. Maybe that's just how I'm taking it, but I could see these guys being the actual legions compared to the older ones, which might be your squad leaders or something like that. Or That's how I'm going to play it, I think. But I do like this configuration of parts. I'm a really big fan. I'm still a really big fan of the way they do skeleton armor, especially the arms. I will never not love this because... How is that connected? It's got to be just, you know, I say this every time. It's like riveted into their bones, which I, I just like the idea behind that. There's no other way it's connected. So it's just a goofy, weird way to put some armor on bones without any other means of connection. So I think it's great. You've got your sort of standard knight's uh, gloves up here, and you've got your sort of standard knight's uh, shins and feet as well. But we've got our Red Shield Soldier torso, which I, you know, we don't see a ton of still. And I really like this armor. I think it looks great. And it looks good in this sort of graphite kind of color. And everything has just a slight bit of metallic, like flake in there almost. You can sort of see it picking up the light. Like it shines a little bit more than I was expecting it to. Not in a bad way, but it, it very much accentuates some of that detail that probably would have been lost had it not had that little, little bit of metallic you know, shine to it. And then we've got this head sculpt up here, which I am a humongous fan, again, of skeletons. So getting, you know, skulls and something that's a little bit different always works for me. So there is just a ton of detail here, you know, where, where we don't have a lot of detail in the actual armor in terms of, you know, fine detail, there's still a little bit of a wash on this skull face that brings out the sculpt. He does have an articulated jaw. Depending on how you got it moved, it's gonna open more or less. But then we've got, you know, like those sunken eyes, the lack of the nose, everything just looks evil and menacing and slightly grotesque, which I think is fantastic. And then we've got this helmet, which is easily the defining characteristic of this figure for me. And it absolutely changes him up because this guy doesn't come with an extra head sculpt. And because of how they've done this helmet, you know, head setup, he doesn't really need one. So you can pop this visor down, and I mean, you can't tell me that that doesn't look slightly more menacing than with it up. Like, it's, it just looks super, super evil, and I really like this visor. I really like this helmet. I'd love to see it used on other types of creatures and configurations uh, down the road or however they want to use it, but I think it looks great. It looks, up, looks good up, but it, it's just super, super dark and evil when it's down. He looks he looks like he's about to throw down. So I'm really happy with the way that worked. Without having to worry about a swappable head, you can just change up his look right then and there. So again, you know, big fan of skeletons, so I was already looking forward to this guy. But getting him in hand, seeing these configurations of parts in this color scheme, with this helmet, with this visor, really sells the overall look for me. Because it's a super, super, you know, Legion Builder type of figure from how you know, quote unquote basic it is. But when you put him next to the other skeletons, he absolutely is going to stand out. And to hammer that home, you know, let's bring the other skeleton legion builders in there. There are, you know, there's like a gold skeleton legion builder, but that's not necessarily the same kind of thing here. These are our regular, normal skeleton legion builders throughout the line. Uh, so we've got our original one here, and these are the advent of decay skeleton legion builders, which are, which are really technically the same figure. It just comes with options for both male and female. And you can see these two are the most similar and they do share a lot of parts. They share the same arms. They share the same, uh, hands, legs, feet, 
that all of that the base figure is is mostly the same but they are entirely different beyond that the color on the bones is different the head sculpts are different the the helmet is obviously different and then you've got different torso pauldrons are going to be different as well and then these guys are, are very much their own thing they do they do fit in line with our skeletons but they are the slimmer 2.0 style of figure so they don't necessarily have that same level of bulk and heft at least in the torso uh, as our normal figures do so this is kind of what i was saying where this guy almost kind of seems like he could be more of like a squad leader to me and you have like you know four or five of these guys behind him and you've got yourself a little crew uh they this one just seems a little more i don't know quote unquote grunty to me than this one does and that's just how i'm kind of viewing it you know your mileage may vary on that i'm not going to tell you how to build your legion uh, but i think these guys are going to pair really well together even if you you don't do that option you can kind of mix and match and bring all of these skeletons in to make your your horde basically now, as far as accessories goes here, we do have a pretty solid spread. Of course, as usual, I'm going to start with the pauldrons because that's that's the major way to change the look on a Legion's figure. So we do have, in the same fashion as the rest of his armor, uh, that sort of like graphite color for the pauldrons, you know, unpainted in terms of, you know, accentuated details. These are the same pauldrons that came with Vorthog. Uh, you know, our, our orc general. So this is, again, you know, a lot of relatively recent parts combinations that we've got in terms of the upper body. I do really love these pauldrons. They're some of my favorites still. They, they beef him up quite a bit, you know, despite the fact that he's beefless. He is, uh, you know, a little bit more accentuated, a little bit puffed up, makes him look a little bit more uh, just menacing in many ways. He, of course, like I mentioned previously, does not come with an extra head sculpt, but, you know, you get the, the visor. It's basically another head right there, and I, I still can't get over how cool this thing looks with that. So no extra head, but the options to have that visor up or down really changes uh, his profile quite well. And then as far as legitimate accessories, we do have a, a pretty decent array. There's a, a lot of different stuff that they're pulling from here. Now, again, in keeping in line with the Legion's Builder you know, schema of things, they're all very much unpainted. Like, they do have paint on them, but they are very much unpainted in terms of those finer details. To start with, we get our, our quiver of arrows to go with our bow. And this is like a very elven style of bow in terms of what we've seen previously. I will say right out the gate, like I usually do with these, I'm not the biggest fan of bow and arrows. I just have the hardest time using them. It's more of just a usability thing. I do think the sculpt on the bow in particular is great. I really like this design. Uh, the quiver can be stored on the strap, which of course, you know... He comes with a strap. You can't you can't have allegiance without getting a strap, right? So you get one of those, and it's got a hook on the back, so you can pop that on there. You do get your single loose arrow to complement your full quiver, and you can get him to hold it. You know, if you're better at that than I am, you're gonna have an easy time with it. I just, I inevitably just send these things flying. So we'll see, we'll see how long I keep this one in uh, in the collection before it gets sucked up by a vacuum. But you do get a, a full complement of bow and arrow stuff. And then we get some of my favorite accessories in the entire line in terms of how they're designed. So you get the, the crazy sort of angled sword with the bone hilt. Of course, again, it's not painted uh, in terms of the details, so it's not, it's not actually bone here. It's just this sort of gunmetal-y uh, gray color. But I love this sword. It's just a weird design, but it looks evil. You know, it looks like something a skeleton might wield, especially with that hilt. And then we've got our humongous, you know, like bladed spear here, which I really love this thing. This is one of my favorite weapons in the entire line. I always think of Brother Mandibulus when I see this, uh, and he's one of my favorite skeletons. So uh, we get this guy here, tons of detail on it. You know, it's, it's already beaten and battered and scraped and gouged and, and cut up, and the light will catch it really, really well, and you can see all that detail. So it's, again, more of that sort of shiny, slightly metallic, gunmetal y color, but this thing works really well. I mean, if when it comes to weapons, these are what I'm using for this guy. But you do get options. So you've got two melee weapons, you've got a single-handed, you've got a two-handed weapon, and you get the bow and arrow, and you get the pauldrons. So there's a lot of different options here in terms of how you want to complement these guys out. You know, if you want to have a bunch of archer skeletons, you've got that option. If you want to have a bunch of, you know, infantry, you've got that option as well. But you can, you know, mix and match to whatever your legion needs. So yeah, overall, really happy with this guy. You know, take that with a grain of salt again, because I love skeletons in legions. It is far and away my favorite aspect of the line, until maybe we get a, a bunch of demons in there. But the skeletons have always been my focus, have always been my favorite. You know, I've always tried to get them as quickly as possible. So, of course, I went after this one 
while I was super impatient about waiting for my order. But I'm really happy I did. Uh, this gives me a really good idea of what to expect with the rest of this wave. And frankly, I need I need a handful of these guys for sure, just to just to get a little crew, have a little squad uh, with my older 1.0 Legion builders, just to sort of play out that idea that I've got going on. But I think this guy comes with a solid array of accessories, good parts. I like this combination, and again, I can't get over that helmet and that visor. It's just a huge game changer for making this guy look super, super evil. So that's going to do it for this look at the Mythic Legion's Deluxe Skeleton Legion Builder. Let me know what you guys think. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share, and until next time.